What is up, everybody? Welcome back to another edition of the Sheehan Show here on Sherdog.com. My name is Sean Sheehan. I am back with my top five bets for the week in the world of mixed martial arts. Um, not a whole pile of mixed martial arts this week. I'm actually concentrating on the one card, which is the UFC card uh, in the Apex UFC Fight Night 235, um, which is not... Look, it's not the best card in the world I picked out. Uh, well... I was going to say I picked out five fights. Actually, someone picked out a fight for me, but we will, we will get to that in a second. Um, but I, 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 there are a few fights I do like on this card, and uh, I, I was able to manage. I was, I managed to be able to get a few bets. I actually, did something a little bit different uh, as well in, in in two ways for this card. So we'll get to that uh, in a second. First of all, let's recap um, last week's bets. Not not a great week last week. My uh, it, it, well, I was going to say my first. Uh, peek into the world of Octagon uh, didn't go well, but I, I have bet on Octagon before, I'm pretty sure, but uh, yeah, all three of the Octagon bets did, did not win. Um, Matthew Bonner did not win uh, against uh, this Palaz guy. I, I spoke about him last week in the preview, but this guy, he looks a, the real deal. I, I said he looked the real deal coming in. I just that money line price of plus 450 for a guy who's beaten the Uber prospects before looked too good for me, and I think I explained that last week, but this Matthias Palaz looks really good. Um, Jack Cartwright, I, I didn't catch the fights live, and I had about five people just message me, goes, yeah, I, I, <laughs> this Jack Cartwright, um, it's, he's one of these guys who has all the ability, but just... It just it just feels like there was a stage in his career where he was almost getting to the UFC, didn't get there, and it's kind of, you know, it's just stayed at that position, and it's very, very unfortunate. And I, I think a guy like uh, Jonas Magard, who is, you know, more of a, a gut feel type of fighter, um, you know, when, when he's beating Jack Cartwright, who has all the talent, you know something is not quite right there, and that's... Um, that's what happened here. So he, he ended up losing that fight. And Adam Palath as well, he lost um, his fight against Stuart Austin, which I, I really, really, really wasn't expecting. I know Stuart Austin is a good fighter, but um, I, I heavily favor Palaz, but it wasn't to be in that one. Um, then I had two bets from one championship, and one of them was absolutely correct, plus 100 for Gustavo Pilar. That uh, happened. He won via decision. And in the other one, I give you a double of Sage Narcot and Gary Tonin. Um, it, uh, Sage Narcot fight obviously was off, so that didn't happen. But the Gary Tonin one came true. If you'd bet on it, you would have won a little bit of money at minus 225. It went from a plus 109 bet to a minus 225 bet. But look, a winning bet is a winning bet, even if it's not the, the biggest in the world. So uh, two of four overall zero of uh one in the flyers and overall for the year so far we're five of eight uh without hitting a flyer yet so uh hopefully uh hopefully the flyer this week will be a, a little bit better and i do you know what i think I, I really like the flyer uh this week so uh we will go for that so right let's get into uh let's get into this week's bet i've gone if anyone watches countdown here in uh over in the uk or in ireland here uh, we, we there's this thing you know when they do the number round they do like two small and three big or you know one big and two, two small or whatever it is or no what is it how many f uh one big and four small I think uh, I've gone two small and three big here so I basically have like I've one genuine flyer and then I've kind of two half flyers so there's some I, I told you at the start of the year there's some big men money bets coming here and uh, and that there is so we will uh, we will go with that um the other thing. The the other two things actually I did. Someone actually requested um, a bet on one of the fights, which I'm very happy for anyone to do. So if you have a like a, a mostly like a fight night coming up or one of these, like if it's a if it's a pay per view, you know what you're going to get. You know you're going to get the big title fights and probably let's say like if an Ian Gary fight is on it or you know if there's a you know a, who a Wonder Boy fight on or something, you're probably going to get a, a bet from that. Maybe one I pick out from the undercard, maybe a European fight or something like that. But if there is a, a fight. That you want me to pick a bet from in this card, um, it was Kizriev against Muradov. The person asked me to, to do a bet, and that will be my second bet of this week. We'll get to it here in a second. But if you fancy for any of the upcoming cards or anything, get on to me on Twitter, Instagram. Maybe this guy DM me on Instagram. Get me there. I don't have that that busy with Instagram, so I'll probably see it. You know, so get on to me there. Get on to me wherever, or you can uh, you can see me in email. Um, my emails on my uh, my Twitter bio. So if you want to get me there, you can. So um, yeah, I'm I'm happy enough to do that, or even in the comment section below I, I almost always look at the comment section so uh check out the comment section below and i i will have a look at that as well but um yeah 
the other thing I did on this, I went, I went almost totally off tape for this one. Usually, uh, as people listening to this show know, I, I you know I go tape and then I look at the records and maybe pick out a thing from the records. I I, I was thinking for these Apex cards, we've talked about them before, and it's it's almost um it, it's almost impossible to have an indication for the level of fighters these lads are fighting at at the apex level because you don't know if they're going to fight uh, watching the the because we have more of one of them fought dennis tulalan who i think is actually like a really good fighter for that level right but then you could fight someone else uh like another middleweight around that level who's like just absolutely useless right and you know, one guy wins and the other guy wins, and like, oh yeah, they both gotta win. But one wins a, means a whole lot more than the other one, right? And uh, <laughs> I think it's better off to watch the tape to uh, to to get that. And look, we do a bit of that as well. But I think for these cards, looking back and like saying, oh yeah, he's won his last three fights by a knockout. Well, who's he knocking out really? You know, I think I think there is a bit more of that. So I'm I'm trying it out for this one. You know, I'm trying it out for this one, as I said, and uh, we'll. Uh, <laughs> maybe we'll revert back if we go on five or if we if we go five and all maybe we'll we'll do this for life but yeah watched a lot of tape on this one and i'm very very interested uh to see how it uh how it plays out okay first bet of the week i'm going for the very first fight so i, I said i usually go for the top fights i'm going for the first fight and i don't uh, it's that that's the way it is here on uh on sure dog and I, I i believe on the ufc website as well now you know things change but i'm going for uh thomas peterson versus jamal pogues and i'm going for this is one of my small bets. Peterson at minus 170. Um, I watched, as I said, I watched a good bit of, of Peterson. He's only lost in, in his career is one we, you know, is one we uh, we know what it means, you know, which is not always the case, especially at, at heavyweight. It's a loss to uh, Waldo Cortez Acosta, who we've seen in the UFC a good while, who I described a couple of weeks ago as slightly better than most heavyweights, you know. And he was... He was w- winning that fight. I watched the whole thing. He got knocked out in the third round. Um, actually, I'm looking here. It's it's only, what, seven seconds from the end, which is pretty unfortunate, to be honest. But he, you know, he was he was winning that fight, as I said. Um, and he's taking on Jamal Pogues here. Watch it. Look, if you look at Thomas um, Thomas Peterson, 28 years of age, he was, a, according to the Dana White Contender Series um, commentary, and honestly, his fights as well, he was a junior college national champion wrestler, and he is a very good wrestler. He's a very good athlete as well for the heavyweight division. He's down here as 6-1 on, um, on Sherdog. I I wouldn't be surprised if he's a bit taller than that. Like he looks he looks a very big heavyweight and he's not like he doesn't look that athletic, but he moves very well and he moves very well for a big guy as well. Um and the main reason why I think he'll win this fight is what going back and watching some Jamal Pogues fights, you might have a preconception. You know, a lot of these you know, big heavyweights they're knockout artists and you know they'll either win in the first round and knock you out or it'll be a slap fest but Jamal Pogues is not that guy like he is a lot of his fights you you might think uh as I said you might think it's it's going to be blood and guts early you know there's going to be either a big knockout or whatever but he's a lot of wrestling in his game you know takes a lot of lads down and does well taking lads down um I think he's going to have a big problem playing that game against Peterson um, because Peterson has very good takedowns. He's very good entries as well. I think Peterson's biggest problem at times is he gets maybe a little bit overexcited and tries to pass guard too much and knows he's better than a lot of these guys. Um, And I think... I don't think that will be the case against Jamal Pogues because if they've gone back and watched the tape as well, and I'm sure obviously they have, they will not. Jamal Pogues can wrestle. If you give him the opportunity, give him a scramble, he'll be able to get on top of you. He also showed in that Mick Parkin fight, which was a, 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 not a great fight, like a pretty boring fight. But it was a fight that shows he can kind of stay and, um, you know, go at it on the feet with a, a very good heavyweight uh, in Mick Parkin, who's a very good heavyweight on the feet. So I think for Peterson, it it that that fight uh, against Sparkin shows two things, right? It shows he's willing to uh, strike with someone, but he's also willing to kind of get into a rhythm. And I think if Peterson can get him into a striking rhythm, 
it'll do a, it'll be halfway to getting the takedown, right? If the fight stays for 15 full minutes in that slow striking with him, you'd you'd favor Pogues. Although Peterson, if he ups the the tempo, he he can hit too. Like he has a nice little uppercut. He's not the biggest puncher in the world or anything like that. You know, he's uh, I'm looking at his record here. I said I'm not looking at the numbers, but he's seven knockouts and eight wins. A lot of them are ground and pound. His last victory was a submission, and I think I think the submission is probably a good way of, of winning here for him. But uh, to to finish off the point and the crux of why I think he will win, I think. He will stay. He's very good at staying safe. Is is Peterson something which is going to be uh, a reoccurring team here at on this show, which I'll talk about here in a second. Good at staying safe on the feet and good at setting up the takedowns. As I said, fast, faster than you would expect. Athletic. I think he'll get the takedown. I think he'll get on top. Um, and I, 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 I think he'll take more than one. I don't. I don't think he'll just take him down and finish him. Although he might. You never know. I think it'll take two, three, four takedowns. Maybe two rounds. Maybe a decision even, but uh, I do think Peterson's takedowns. I think he's he can punch. He he is a nice little uppercut. Not the worst technical boxer in the world at all. You don't want to get into it, as I said. You want to get in a technical matchup with Pogue because I think that'll be tough. But I think those takedowns will win the fight. I think if Pogue goes for takedowns of himself uh, of his own, I think Peterson will either stop them or turn them around and get on top himself uh, and I think it's going to be a tough night for uh, for Pogues in that realm now it's very interesting you you know he've, he fought Waldo Cortez and I you know I talked uh, uh, before about levels and finding it hard to decipher the actual levels some of these lads are at but we have a, a clear uh, indication of the level considering he fought Waldo Cortez only in 2022 as well it's not like you know it's not like it's five years ago or anything very similar fighters still um so I I think the level of his wrestling is just going to be a level above the wrestling of Jamal Pogues and at minus 170 I think it's it's a very very good bet considering the main route to victory for Pogues uh is is Oh, well, not necessarily the main route to victory, but a main route to victory or to domination of fights for Bugs is his wrestling. Uh, I think that'll be taken away from him, and I think uh, Peterson will win the fight. Right, the second bet uh, of uh, of the night is uh, the one I got asked about. Who do I think will win? What's my bet for uh, for this fight? And uh, it is Kizriev versus Mordov, and I'm going for Kizriev to win by submission. A plus 350. So as I said, we went two small and three big. And this is uh, one of the one of the big ones. I was so impressed by Kizriev. Again, another guy <coughs> who doesn't maybe look as athletic as he actually is. Actually, I'm looking at the, his picture here on uh, on Sherdog, and he looks a lot more muscular and athletic in, in this one. Uh, but maybe it was at a, a different weight class or something like that. But this guy, you know, he was the guy who fought Dennis Tulaland that I mentioned earlier on. Um... He's just, he's so quick to get in on those legs. He's so quick to get that takedown. Again, I, I, I mentioned it with uh, with Peterson, even more so for Kizriev. He's really good defensively on the feet. And he throws kind of, you know, that kind of, that, that bolo kind of side uppercut punch that we used to see an awful lot in MMA a few years ago. But it's very hard to throw without getting hit. But he is... You know, he he reminds me a little bit of like, and and this is um this is middleweight if I'm not mistaken, isn't it? Yes, he reminds me a little bit of a heavyweight, who like say like, go with me here for a second, but like a Silgan, right? Not not he doesn't fight the same way as Silgan, but you know the way Silgan can throw shots that other heavyweights can't throw because he's a way quicker than them and a way better athlete than them, right? I feel like a Kizriev is like that a little bit. He is able to throw punches. Um, in a way that most other middleweights can't throw them because he is quicker and smarter and has the ability to wrestle as well To if you throw a counter to his punches. He also threatens the wrestling very early a lot and makes you afraid, basically. <laughs> so if you do throw a punch, it's kind of a half-scared, half-punch, which he will either counter with a punch of his own or take you down off of... Um, as I said again, the takedowns are just phenomenal. Like, those low ankle, double ankle pick type of things. He's really, really, really good. He's one of those lads you watch. And, uh, like, you watch the first first fight of his. I, I watched one of 
I, I don't know, it was an FN, uh, FNG fight or something like that. It didn't last very long. But, like, it's, like, 30 seconds in, you're like, okay, well, what's this guy doing? What's he setting up? And then, bang, straight away, what he's been doing for the rest of that, for, for the start of that round. Let's say he's he's kind of pawing away with the right hand, kind of pawing low, maybe throwing a jab in. And next thing, he dives down with the right hand, picks an ankle, or, like, picks the back of the, the, the ties, gets the other hand um, in underneath it and gets the takedown straight away. Like, he's, he's really good at... It's just setting things up and getting them. Absolutely brilliant. Um, Mordov on the other side of it is not a bad fighter at all. You know, he beat Brian Barina, uh, Barina last time out. Okay, he lost to Kai Bahalio and Gerald Merchart before that. Watching the Merchart fight, you know, he, was, he kind of, I suppose, showed the good and bad of him uh, in that fight. Um, he has heavy hands. He absolutely hits hard. You know, he's a lot of knockouts in his record. Just looking at it here. Um, you know, he knocked out Andrew Sanchez in the UFC and and, and a couple more as well. Um I think I think he's I, I can't say anything bad about Morda really, you know? He's a good you know, he's he's a long fighter, uses his lint well, has a bit of wrestling as well, there's no doubt about it. He you know, he can fight he can fight it in all realms. But I just think he's up against a guy who's much better than him. I really, really, really do. I think the biggest issue, right, for me is is the initial issue, which I started with at the start of this podcast, is the levels, right? Kizriev hasn't fought the levels yet. Now, Tulanan's a very good fighter, but is Tulanan the level of Bahalia? Absolutely not. I, I don't think so. Uh, or, like, even the likes of, you know, okay, forget about Tulanan for a second, but Marshart, Barbarina, Andrew Sanchez, you know, good veteran fighters. Uh, Kizriev has just never fought those yet. Like, he fought, okay, Pal Harris, but it's Pal Harris, what Pal Harris was. And, you know, that that was kind of it, apart from Tulalan when he got to the UFC. Um, that would be the one big issue. But I think his talent is enough. Like, sometimes you can see, like, Habib is always a great example I use of this, right? He hadn't fought really anyone on his way up. But God Almighty, if you can't see the talent, you're blind. Like, and I think it's the same with Kizriev. Now, as I said, right, Moradov... Uh, is a talented guy too. There's no doubt about that. And would I, would I be massively shocked if Mordov came in here and landed one of those big shots after being able to stop a takedown? No, not, not at all. Not, nothing would shock you in MMA with the, with the levels these guys reach. But when looking at the betting and looking at the price, like this is a betting show as well, let's, let's remember that. You're looking at the price of that submission and the submission is plus 350 for a guy who has unbelievable takedowns, who passes really well, who in his uh, in his last fight took the back so quickly and got in a rear naked choke in the most beautiful way ever against a good fighter. To give me plus 350 for a submission win on that guy against a, you know, a guy who's a striker, basically, in Mordor. Not, not necessarily a striker, but a guy who will be looking to strike. So if you, you know... If he was a, maybe a wrestler more of, you could see Kizriev going out and just striking with him and trying to knock him out. But the fact that he is a very good striker, he'll probably try to wrestle him and submit him. Um, so plus 350 for that. I just think it's a fantastic bet. Um, as I said, Mordov a very good fighter as well, but I'm, I'm betting on Kizriev's ability and I think it's high. I think it's very, very, very high. Okay, bet number three. Um, I'm going for the... Uh, the Drew Dober versus uh, my Cano fight. I have him in here as Dober. I need to fix my notes. Uh, <laughs> uh, Dover, even. My, my, my B button's not working. That's probably why I have it in here wrong. Um, but I I just... I, I really, really am intrigued by this fight. Uh, and Oh, sorry. I, I'll give you my bet. Uh, Dober, my Cano, under one and a half rounds at minus 117. Uh, I... Didn't really have a strong pick for who I think is going to win it. I, I was talking to... Um, who was I talking to? I was talking to my my colleague, uh, Harry Powell, about this fight. And I was saying... I, I kind of said to him, like, what, what's your opinion? I was like, I'm, I'm kind of struggling. Like, who, <laughs> who do you think is going to win? And he goes, well, do, Drew Dober's going to come out like a mad bastard. He's going to try to knock him out. And either my can will kind of jab him up, take him down and submit him. Or do, Dober will land a big shot and knock him out. And I was thinking, like... That's exactly <laughs> what I was thinking about it. I, I also... Right, that's if both of them come out and fight like their optimum game almost. One of those two things is going to happen. 
the other the, the, the other part of this right is I think both of these guys are guys that kind of blow hot and cold at times like you look at Mike down through the years like he picked up big wins against the likes of you know Brad Riddell Jai Herbert and, and others as well but you know he's lost a lot of fights and look he's lost the good guys the Sanyos Fiziev Chan Sung Jung Aldo Ortega there's, there's no doubt about it but did he always like perform massively in those no like first round knockout to Fiziev um First round knockout to Chen Sung Jung. First round, sorry, second round knockout to um uh to Jose Aldo. So like, there's there's a lot in it, and for Dober as well. Dober as well is 35 years of age. is a big part of it as well. You know, knocked out in the first round against uh <laughs> against Frivola and and things like that. But then a lot of those fights around it have been knockouts. And a lot of those fights around it have been finishes as well. You know, what is it? One, two, three, four, five, six finishes in a row here. One against him and, and five for him, and for. Uh, for his opponent, uh, you know, very, very similar. Only one decision. He's asked one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, uh, eight, nine fights. So, for this to finish is is probably likely. Uh, the only thing I'm going a little bit step further is saying it's going to be inside the distance, and that's basically my breakdown of this. I've really, uh, I really don't have a a, a massive favouring for either guy uh, on it. Let me just see. Uh, the the straight up prices uh, on this one. So Dober is plus. He's got. Jeez, this is weird. He goes from plus one fifty to plus one twenty, uh, minus one eighty five from my kind of all the way into minus one forty five. So I think that just tells you. I think that fight would probably be closer. The the further we get, I think it could be a pick 'em fight by the time uh, by the time Saturday night comes. I really do think it's it's a very 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 close fight in terms of the betting. All that I would say is I th- I don't look. Here it is. I don't think either man. I, sorry, I don't think both men will stand in their laurels, right? I don't think both men will make it a tippy tappy close fight. Either both of them will show up and someone's getting finished. One of them will show up and he'll knock out the other lad, or vice versa, or submit the other lad. I I find I just find it hard to think that both of them won't show up in like an attacking, um, meaningful way. So. The finish I'm going for. I'm back in the finish. I'm I'm taking a little bit of a chance for a little bit of a better price at minus one one seven, under one and a half rounds. Okay, <coughs> next bet. And again, we said it at the start of the year, and I mean it. I don't care about my record this year. I'm betting on prices, and this is a price bet more than any. So, um, Belbita and Molly McCann. The only call I had again on this fight after watching a good bit of both of them, I think it's going to be long and I think it's going to be close, right? And my call is that this fight's going to go to a decision. So let's, I, I, I'll run you through my, my thought process here. So I watched a lot of my, we'll talk, I'll talk more in a second about how I think they fight and how I think the fight will go. But my end conclusion, I'm starting with the end conclusion, is this fight is going to go to a decision, right? And it's going to be close. So, betting for the fight to go to the decision, minus 265. So, no, I don't like that. That's that's too low of a price. Okay? Molly McCann to win by decision, minus 112. Mm. Molly McCann straight up is minus 260, minus 112. It's not, it's not a bad bet. But, you know, Molly, a lot of times when Molly wins, she does get a knockout. You know, she throws those spinning back fists and things like that. There is a possibility of that, right? So... I, I don't like that price either. And then the conclusion that I came to was the next price. And that's my bet for this week. It's Belbita to win by decision. And that's plus 350. That price to me is is just too big. It's the one that stands out. Now, I don't necessarily uh, 100% think she is going to win by decision. If, in fact, if you were to give me a straight up bet, I'd probably say McCann to win by decision. That would probably be my pick. If you know, if I was doing a, you know, five picks for the night, uh, in the main card or whatever, it'd probably be McCann by decision, right? But to go from minus one twelve to plus three fifty on what I think is going to be a close decision is just too much. And this is a betting show, and I want to give you be- bigger, better bets. Now, if you think my, my call is wrong on that. Don't bet on it. Maybe bet McCann to win by decision. Maybe bet McCann to win to get the knockout. Actually, McCann to get the knockout was the second one I was looking at. Plus four seven five. I think that's a fantastic price. In fact, Belbita decision 
McCann knockout. If you back boarded him and hedge it a little bit, I think that would make a, a lot of sense. I know a lot of the bookmakers do like double chance where you can actually do both of those in one bet and maybe you'd get like, you know, I don't know, maybe you get plus 100 or something like that in it. That, that bet is not up here yet, but that is one I would definitely tell people to do. I, I think, I think, you know, as I said though, McCann by decision as well is, is a, a, a very big possibility. Um, my reasoning behind it is is twofold, really. I think, I think if you look at Molly McCann over the last while, she has like put in obvious, like clear um, improvements in her game since she got to the UFC. And you, you know, it feels it feels like Molly McCann only just got to the UFC, but it's 2018. You know, it's six years um, since she's been there now, and obviously. Um, you know the the improvements have found her in a place where she's fighting the likes of Aaron Blanchfield, right? Which is a very, very, very tough fight. Um, you know, she fought Talia Santos, very tough fight, but she's beaten the likes of Hannah Goldie, Leona Carolina, Kim. You know, to get to that position, and I think, um, I I think when you you know, and and obviously, you know the the uh, I haven't mentioned it yet, but the the fight before in two thousand and nineteen, it was a long, long time ago since that fight. You know, what is it? Five years ago now. Belbita's twenty seven. She was only twenty two at the time, and I think the difference between that fight and this fight is maybe a little bit of we, we saw it with uh, Bilal Muhammad and Luca when they fought. One guy was kind of at his peak at one stage and improved. Um, a little bit, and the other guy was kind of on the way up and improved a lot. And I think that is the case here. Now, McCann, McCann probably wasn't necessarily at her peak, but I think she was closer to her peak than than Belbita. I th- the reason I think it's going to be close here, right, is we've Belbita's been in there before. She's seen a lot of McCann. We've seen a lot of McCann on tape now, and we've seen a lot of kind of those setups to the big knockout blows. And I think the 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 lint and the ability to use that lint for Belbita is something that McCann will either struggle with or will use to set up those knockouts. Now, the point I just made before that is we've seen, and if you're Belbita, you've seen those set up to the knockouts many, many times now, right? So if you can avoid that, what's left then? You know, your lint and your ability to use that lint should be a factor and a big factor in this fight. Like McCann's ability to come inside and maybe land to the body and land one, two, three inside. She's very good at throwing combinations like that. Will probably make it closer if it is, you know, one of those where she a fights where she's kind of getting picked off and all. If you're a beat as well, she has a tendency to maybe attack a little bit too much, which is probably not the, the smartest thing to do against someone like Monty McCann. Um, so if she holds it back a little bit, it's a funny thing to say, but like your best best way to win this fight is probably to not throw as many punches as you normally would. Um, and I think if she can do that, avoid the big punches of McCann, I think it's going to be a very close fight. As I said, give me a straight up bet and go for McCann, but I do think this fight's going long. They fought once before, went to a decision once before. Um, it's obviously, you know, four years down, five years down the line. It'll take a big turnaround, but I like... Uh, uh, I like the price plus three fifty on Belbita to get uh, get the job done here. Right, the flyer of the week, the big bet of the week, another big one. Uh, I'm going for uh, Roman Delitza TKO KO at plus four fifty, um, and this is one of those bets as well. You look at it after watching tape, and you're kind of shocked by uh, by the price. I've my my biggest takeaway in this uh, tape watching, and. It's look. It's a middleweight fight. We had a middleweight fight. You know, we probably had one last week. We had DDP against Strickland. We have we have middleweight fights coming out of our ears, right? There to me, there is a clear meta game in in middleweight MMA these days, right? And it's like being bad versions of Israel Adesanya, basically, right? Everyone is kind of fighting that kind of inside uh, to outside fainting game with like some hand fighting it's like it's like a, mi- a mix between 
what Izzy does and what, you know, the Robbie Lawler, Johnny Hendricks time where it was like nothing but like inside hand fighting. It's like a mixture between that because like most of these guys are not good enough to fight that outside game, right? So I think Imavov on, on his side has kind of got drawn into that a little bit. He was watching some earlier tape in him. He was more of a um an outside you know, Fernand Lopez type of fighter who throws those big outside kicks and, you know, is a, you know we, we would maybe incorrectly describe him as a karateka or something like that. But now he's become more of that inside game, with still with the hands low a little bit, uh, but way more, if you were to just watch him straight and watch what actually happens rather than the movements, it's way more like an, an Adesanya to Vittori type of, game you know kind of a mixture of both of those right which is like you're, you're literally it's kind of like an, just an adjustment to the mean there almost um and the lids on the other side of it then very similar in terms of fights your inside game throws your overhand does the fainting jabs right the difference there is i actually think that's the lids's game i think that is his his best game i think that's the best way he fights uh, if the meta game of MMA was middleweight MMA was something else, I think he'd still be fighting that way. So it's more natural for a guy like Delidza to fight in that manner than it is for definitely a Mavov, but for other guys, for other guys as well to, to fight that way. Um, and that's why I, I'm basically picking him to win here and why I think he'll get the knockout because he has massive power as well very very good power okay I'm looking at the record here only 7 knockouts in 12 but you know still pretty good 58% um, you know 10 finishes in, in 12 but the way like watching him fighting fight back that Vittori fight the knockout he got against Hermanson the Phil Hawes knockout knockout against Kyle Dawkins you know 3 knockouts in a row before the, the, the Vittori decision he very well could have won that Vittori decision I think I had it for him but he's really good like over the top hitter and watching him have of he's fighting against sean strickland okay a different type of fighter but still they're gonna be fighting in that same pocket he just got hit so many times over the top now he's not like a guy who's gone out there you know getting finished all the time in fact he's never been knocked out right but still he's you know i think that game hasn't changed um <sighs> How would you put it? I, I don't think it is... A, I, I think it's only recently changed, let's put it that way. And I don't think he's fought the level of fighter in terms of power that's going to put him out. Like, Sean Strickland's the best fighter he's fought in the last few years. Um, the only one that's beaten him since, you know, Phil Hawes in 2021. And he, you know, Sean Strickland's not the big power puncher. I think we'd all agree with that, although he's very good in, in his way. But when he meets a big power puncher, what's going to happen? Um... I, I think he's going to get knocked out, to be honest. And, you know, the last fight I said, if you were to give me a straight-up money line pick, I'd pick it differently. If you were to give me a straight-up money line pick in this fight, I'd pick the Lidza to win by knockout. Um, I think it's a great bet. I think it's a great price, plus 450. I think he's just going to land a shot. I think Imavov is going to be there to be hit. The Lidza has no problem hitting guys. I think Imavov... It, look, wh how's Imavov going to win this fight? I think the best thing he could do is give up on that metagame. Give up on that middleweight MMA meta game. Fight the outside fight. Stay away from him. Throw those long kicks from the outside. Uh, but I just don't think he's going to do it. I, don't, I just think that's the way lads fight these days. He's going to fight his little in-fight, hand-fighting game. The Lids is going to come over the top of those low hands when he throws a jab, counter him, and knock him out with a big right hand. That's my opinion on that fight, and that's, uh, yeah, that's the flyer of the week. Um... Okay, let's run through a few more of them. As I said, not much here uh, that I have a big, big call on. Uh, Maxim against Johnson. Uh, I do like Maxim in that fight, watching a bit of tape from that minus 190. I see in other places he's plus two, or sorry, minus 225. Yeah, um, do you know what? Not the worst price ever. I, I do like him. I think he's a good, good guy. Uh, Timba Garimbo against Pete Rodriguez. You know, I don't think Garimba is by any means the finished article yet. Um, he's supposed to fight Kiefer Crosby, uh, I believe it was on this card, but um, I think he's a lot better than Pete Rodriguez. I don't, you know, I don't rate Pete Rodriguez that highly. Would I bet on him at that price, someone that raw? Probably not, so that's probably one uh, I would avoid. Haven't seen a whole lot of Builder and, and Lee 
very close fight there. Stolyarenko against Carolina. Again, you know, two a, a very close fight. Stolyarenko just about the favourite there. And I think that's just about right. But again, let, let's see what the price in this one to go to a decision is. Uh, minus 125. That'd be the bet I'd be betting on here. Quinones, Midera. I think Quinones is the underdog. Um, I'd probably go for the underdog there. We talked about Pogues and Peterson. Uh, the straight-up prices then for the, the bigger fights. Actually, uh, Radeke and Urbina. Um, I, I always thought that, you know, the, the, the uh, Radeke has a possibility of taking it to the next level. And if it could be this fight, that minus 170 mightn't look too bad. Urbina is kind of one of those, you know... Not the best fighter in the world, not the worst fighter in the world <laughs> type of guys. You know, not the you know, not not massive. I, I avoided this uh, Natalia Silva uh fight massively. Actually, has this this fight has changed? Has it gone mad? Let me just look. Oh yeah, it's Arujo. It was supposed to be Silva versus Silva. Is that has that changed overnight? So it's Arujo coming in on, on short notice, if I'm not mistaken. Um and she is a big, big underdog here now, but that's interesting. I probably need to go and watch it a little bit more than that. That's come up with me there, so we'll we leave that for a second. But um we talked about Kizrev, uh, Muradov. I really like Kizrev. I see one place here is minus 150. If you can get him at minus 150, I think that's a great price as well. Um, Salikov, Brown. Like that plus 200 on Salikov. I was so tempted to put that in as one of my bets. Really, really, really tempted. Um, yeah, I, I think he, I, I like that. I'd, prob- I'd probably bet on that plus 200 for Salikov there. Um, then we've Dober and Mykano straight up prices there. Plus one twenty all the way out to plus one fifty for Dober. My cano is the favorite uh, from anywhere from minus two hundred to minus one four five, and in the Lidza, plus one forty. The underdog against the Mavov minus one seventy. Although it's a little bit closer in uh, in some other places. If you like a Mavov um, to uh, get the knockout, it's plus two two five all the way out to plus two fifty. Um, Mm, I'm not sure I'm the biggest fan of that, to be honest. If you like a Mavov, I, I think if a Mavov wins, I think he's probably winning a decision, uh, which is around plus 240 as well. So, uh, yeah, that's not a bad price there. If you fancy uh, the Lidza to get the decision, it is plus 550. Uh, bottom inside the distance, plus 215 for the Lidza, plus 240 for a Mavov. So, the bet uh, the betters are kind of agreeing with me and saying if someone does finish it, it will be the Lidza. There you go. Right, let's just to recap uh, the bets for this week before we go. Thomas Peterson minus 170, plus 350 for Kazriev to win by submission. Uh, Drew Dober, Mikana under one and a half rounds at minus 117. Babita to win by decision, plus 370. And the Flyer of the Week, the Lidza to win by KO, TKO at plus 450. All right, everybody. Thank you very much for tuning in. If you haven't already, please subscribe. Please give a thumbs up. Please leave a comment below. Let me know your bet for the week. Who are you betting on this week? Um, and uh, we'll go from there. All right, everyone. Thanks for tuning in. My name is Sean Sheehan for Shardog.com, and I'll see you all next time.